The main intelligence directorate of the Ukrainian Defense Ministry has struck three Russian helicopters on territory of Russia, the agency reported on Saturday. According to sources within Ukrainian special services, Russian Mi-28 and Ka-226 helicopters were struck on the territory of National Helicopter Manufacturing Center Mill and Kamov Joint Stock Company on the night leading to July 21 in Tomolino settlement in Russia's Moscow region. Mill and Kamov is an aircraft manufacturing enterprise that specializes in the development, production and repair of helicopters. The helicopters were hit as a result of sabotage activities by the main intelligence directorate. The third Russian helicopter was struck on the territory of the Kryaz airfield in Samara on July 24. The targeted helicopter was a multi-purpose Mi-8. In addition, as a result of the operation carried out by the main intelligence directorate on the morning of July 27, Russian military airfields were attacked in the city of Engels in the Saratov region, Dyajalevo airfield in the Ryazan region and Olenia airfield in Murmansk region. An oil refinery in Ryazan was also hit as a result of a kamikaze drone attack. Western companies help Russian military machine, 3,638 components were found in 134 separate weapons. Russia continues to manufacture missiles and drones on a large scale using Western components. Despite numerous export controls, Western companies still bear much of the responsibility for providing Russia with access to these important components. To make export controls effective, there must be accountability, writes the Financial Times. It is noted that more than 50 countries have imposed sanctions against Russia. They provide for export controls. This has increased production costs for the Russian military and stopped their supply chains. However, the flow of distribution networks helps the Russian Federation bypass the restrictions. To make export controls effective, journalists say corporate enforcement, the government's euphemism for punitive measures against our own corporations, is needed supplemented by secondary sanctions and a significant increase in funding for regulators. The Russian military industrial complex relies on Western-made components. In 2023, Ukrainian authorities launched a unique resource that provided unprecedented information about the Russian army, components in the aggressor's weapons and soon weapons of war. Authorities have identified 3,638 components in 134 separate weapons. For example, the Shahed 238 UAV has electronic components from Canada, China, Germany, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Taiwan, and the United States. These findings support Russia's own research that its military relies 70 to 90 percent on Western-made components. In its recent attacks on civilian infrastructure in Ukraine, Russia has used new types of weapons, including the KH-69 and Zircon missiles. This demonstrates that the country is capable of introducing innovations in weapons that require even more sophisticated Western components. Russia is still able to adapt, but it is doing so with the help of the West, the article says. Since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, coalition countries have increased the coherence of their export control regimes and stepped up enforcement. Recent U.S. efforts to involve financial institutions in disrupting distribution networks are already having an effect, the reporters say. Chinese banks are increasingly scrutinizing or refusing to do business with Russia, but no systematically important institution has yet faced U.S. sanctions. To be effective, the U.S. must use its powerful tools as well as threaten. And while engaging financial institutions is valuable, successful implementation requires the participation of corporations themselves, the authors write. They add that investigative journalists, think tanks and human rights groups have provided compelling evidence of how Western components end up in Russia. The problem is clear to everyone except the corporations themselves. In response, most companies hide behind boilerplate legal language. According to the journalists, American companies have an obligation not to violate export control regimes. This includes denying Russia access 
to certain products and restricting almost all exports to Russia for military use. Companies must do more to strengthen their distribution networks, due diligence to comply with export controls. Failing that, only multi-billion dollar fines for export control evasion, similar to those banks face for money laundering and terrorist financing, could change corporate risk-reward calculations, the authorities conclude.